Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this episode. Today we're going to be talking about week seven of the National Football League, give you our weekly picks, storylines to look forward to ahead of this weekend's game, injury updates, as well as discussing two debates that are going on in the NFL community right now, including which team can beat the Los Angeles Rams and who is the most underrated team in the NFL this year. Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Long time no see, or shall I say, long time no listen, for you guys listening to the podcast app. It's been a while since I joined you guys. How long has it been? It's been four, three weeks. You're saying four, okay, so three weeks since I came out with a podcast, four weeks since I've been on camera. Okay, that's what my producer is saying. So, yeah, that's a long time, too long. But you know what happens, life happens, and... You just gotta miss some time. But a lot of things have changed um, for me. So for you guys that don't know who I am, allow me to reintroduce myself. I am Hassan Khan, the wonderful host of this show that we like to call Time to Football. Things have changed in my life, including I feel a little bit colder on top. My head is a little bit bald, and that's because I got a haircut. And for you guys that don't join us or are joining us for the very first time you don't know that I had very long hair it actually was uh, down to my a little past my shoulders and uh, I got it cut because um, well if you watch the Madden tournament if you watch the finals of that you can see that I lost the game I lost the bet I had to cut my hair so I cut my hair on camera check it out youtube.com slash time to football for you guys listening on um, the podcast app you go on there, search the Mata Tournament Finals, and uh, you'll see me get my hair cut. And uh, for you guys that are listening to this podcast on iTunes, just know that we are streaming this um, podcast up on YouTube. I'm waving to the camera right now, so you guys can go on there and you can see me waving to the camera right now. And for you guys, vice versa, are watching this video on YouTube, you can go to... Um, the podcast app, iTunes, search for Time to Football, listen to this podcast on the go, um, whether it's at the gym, at work, whatever. No, not at work. Why did I say work? Don't listen to this at work. I mean, you could, but you'd get in trouble. Listen to this while you're driving to work. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I recommend you guys, if you're listening to this on the podcast app, to go to YouTube, watch us. Because you see some pretty cool graphics that go along with it. You can see my um, awesome haircut. It's not really awesome. It's just very standard Caucasian. Um, even though I'm not Caucasian. But um, anyways, we're going to get into week seven of the National Football League. So we come out with a weekly podcast every Wednesday at 8 p.m. The video podcast is kind of delayed because a lot of editing goes into it. But for you guys on the podcast app, Wednesday, 8 p.m., guaranteed. Um, so weekly podcast, we're going to get into week seven, but before we get into week seven, we do have to recap week six. I don't know about you, but I've been enjoying this NFL season so far. What it's been nine overtime games so far and four teams have tied. Um, it's exciting football to watch. It's exciting time to be an NFL fan. And, um, we got to recap week six and the way we do that on the show is we name our players of the week. So there's no format for this. There's no like choose three like AFC, NFC player. Like, no, it's just who we feel like are the best players that performed really well in the week. So for week six, we chose six players for our players of the week. And let's go ahead and name them. Let's start off with the Los Angeles Chargers running back. Melvin Gordon, boy, this guy is the lifeline of that offense. You could say Phillip Rivers is uh, the main integral point of that offense, which he is, but Melvin Gordon has a lot to do with it as well. 132 yards rushing, 18 carries, three touchdowns, and he led the Chargers to a 38-14 victory over the Cleveland Browns. Our second player of the week, probably more of a lifeline to his offense than Melvin Gordon, and that's Todd Gurley, the best running back in the NFL right now as far as rushing goes. 208 rushing yards on 28 carries, two touchdowns, and he led the Rams to a 23-20 victory 
over the Denver Broncos. Our third player of the week is a quarterback, Matt Ryan. 354 yards, 31 of 41, 75.6% uh, percent completed. And he led the Falcons to a 34 to 29 victory over the Buccaneers. Our fourth player of the week, often uh, underlooked or overlooked, shall I say, that's Albert Wilson. Six receptions, 155 yards, two touchdowns, and he was a big part in that upset, that overtime upset against the Chicago Bears, beating them 31 to 28. Our fifth player of the week is our defensive player of the week, and that is Zadarius Smith, the linebacker against the Tennessee Titans. He had three sacks, five combined tackles, one forced fumble, and he led the Ravens to a 21 to nothing victory against the Titans. So he was a big part of that shutout. And our last player of the week, it's a kicker, Steven Gostowski for the brand. So a lot of debate has been going on or, or, or a lot of, we were meeting up and we were talking about who should be the players of the week. And we were leaning towards Jason Myers, but we had to go with Steven Gostowski. Five of five field goals. His longest field goal was a 50 yarder. He was four for four on extra points. And what's most important is that he kicked the game-winning field goal against the Kansas City Chiefs to beat them 43-40. to um, Interesting fact, actually. There has never been a score in the NFL that, uh, or a game that has ended with a score 43-40. to That was actually the first game in NFL history, uh, the Patriots and Chiefs, that ended in 43-40. to uh, But those are your players of the week. Like I said, we debated about a lot of other players like Jason Myers, uh, Cole Beasley as well, nine receptions, 101 yards, two touchdowns. He had a big game. Um, speaking of Cole Beasley, have you guys um, seen this video that's been going on where he rapped? So this is old. It, he did this back in July. He was on a radio station in Dallas, just decided to rap. Um, can we cue it up? Is it possible if we do it? All right, so we're looking into it. We're going to see if we can show you guys. But um, yeah, I don't know. After this big game, a lot of people have just been bringing that up again and been searching it, and it's been getting viral recently. So, um, we got it. We got it pulled up. Okay, so we're gonna play a little bit of it, and we're gonna get back to you guys. <laughs> hey, so this is how we gonna do it? Yeah. It's 2018. Cole Beasley. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Autobiography, Cold Beasley. Yeah, let's go, Beasley. Let's go. My flow is pure gold. It's cold back on the mic. Phone suck the life up out of a beat. Like it's like cold. Thought I was gone, but I'm never leaving. I'm forever eating. Every season is heavy thieving. Stealing everything that I can from the man to my heavy breathing. Stopping, I'm dead. I ain't got competition leaping off of a ledge. Cause they sleep in that first sight like they sleepwalking. What you can't see stalking would turn you to meet at the flea market. I'm hunting for heads. I'm Mike Tyson with the mic biting. Strike Titans with his God flow like Poseidon. Woo! This is how I like it. I'm telling myself, remind them as if they hurt my old it's slick spit at his finest. Biggie in them white dicky spiffy collar with rhyming time after time, but I'm making it where it's timeless. Really, I'm just here simply trying to grab the ears, but it appears ball and rapping can't mix like engineers. Woo! New York beats. Southern, what's the difference? Even trapped. If I'm trapped in it, I'ma come and rip it. Dr. Drake can even stitch it. It's easy as easing in an easement with the width of a cricket. Stick and move and I'ma end it. And it's just the beginning. So buckle up. Fly versus if you insecure, the tumble sucks. Woo! Have them writing ish with some bubble guts. Cause coming after me is some trouble. Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Cole Beasley. Man, that is fire. That's hot. I love that. I love that. That he sounds like logic. He really does. Um, and logic is fire, so Cole Beasley is fire. I'll stop that. Um, but that is actually pretty cool. Uh, so, we're going to get now into the uh, storylines that, that have been going on in the NFL right now. Um, we're just going to talk about it a little bit. Um, and, you know, you guys can give your thoughts in the comment section as well. So, big storylines ahead of week seven. Probably the biggest one is that Le'Veon Bell... It's being reported that he's going to show up during the team's bye week so that he can collect his game checks. Just a lot of things are going into why he's showing up in week seven. And he expects to play in week eight. However, so far, no one has heard, as far as Pittsburgh Steelers officials go, no one has really heard from Le'Veon Bell. They don't know if he's going to show up or not. Ben Roethlisberger joked that James Conner, his last game was in week six because Le'Veon Bell apparently is coming back. So, um... Oh, Le'Veon, where art, where art thou? I don't know where you are, but this team needs you, and this team can change drastically if you were on offense. But, you know, I think this 
team is happy with James Conner, regardless if Bell shows up or not. But that's just something to look into maybe towards Saturday, towards the end of the week, if Le'Veon Bell is going to show up or not. Another storyline we got to talk about, the Raiders are seeking a trade for Amari Cooper. So they're not actively seeking to shop him, but they've set a price for him. They set a first round pick um, to be the compensation for Amari Cooper. Whether or not he gets uh, picked or, or, or traded or not, it seems like John Gruden wants to rebuild this team. He signed a 10 year, $100 million contract. They're they're seeking to trade him because it seems like they're going to rebuild. Um, it seemed like that was the move when they traded Cleo Mack, and now they're seeking to trade for Amari Cooper, and they want a first round pick out of the trade. So, next storyline: Mike Smith, defensive coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, former head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, has been fired by Tampa Bay. This is mainly due because of the Buccaneers having a 31st ranked pass defense and the Buccaneers are trying to make some moves trying to move on it seems like I don't know if they think that they still have a shot to make the playoffs maybe they do but for now they decided that it was the best decision for them to move on from Mike Smith a defensive coordinator so they're going to have an interim defensive coordinator for now Um, and Mike Smith is gone from Tampa Bay This is an interesting storyline. So there's concern right now by the NFL as far as the Los Angeles Chargers go. As far as ticket sales, personal seat licenses, they're not performing as well as far as marketing goes with the Chargers in Los Angeles as they hoped for. They hoped for making $400 million off of personal seat licenses and season tickets, all that kind of sort of stuff. But they're teetering $140, $150 million right now. So it's kind of expected. They kind of knew what was going to happen with, you know, the Rams going into Los Angeles. They were the favorite. They used to be in Los Angeles for the longest time. So a lot of football fans in LA are already Rams fans. And the Chargers a year later went to LA and they know about the competitiveness that goes on with it but um, a lot of NFL f- officials are um, kind of concerned about it rethinking the uh, the whole move like was it a good decision or not um, they're trying to compete with the Rams to getting some fans to the Chargers and the last storyline that we're going to talk about Derek Anderson is going to be the starter for the Buffalo Bills this Sunday against the Indianapolis Colts so Josh Allen is out. He's been dealing with an injury in his UCL. So Derek Anderson is going to be relieving him. Starting this game, Allen is expected to miss maybe, well, he's going to miss this week for sure, but maybe for the next couple of weeks. And they're not going to start Nathan Peterman because he gave up that pick six, cost the game against the Houston Texans, and they're rolling with Derek Anderson as they're starting Quarterback. So we talked about Josh Allen having some uh, health problems as far as injury goes. Let's get into some other players that are having some injury um, issues as well. So here's some in- injury updates going into week seven. So this is all, like I said, this show comes out Wednesday. So by the time you see this show, maybe this has changed or not. But going into some injury news for some players, some key players we got to look into. Leonard Fournette, his hamstring has been bothering him all year. He could play in week seven. The decision has been made yet, but if he plays week seven, it's guaranteed that he's going to be splitting some snaps with TJ Yeldon. Josh Allen, aforementioned UCL injury out for week seven. Mike Hughes, an ACL injury, unfortunately tore his ACL, the Vikings First round cornerback, and he's out for the whole year. Devontae Freeman, his foot, he's placed on IR. So he's not necessarily out for the whole year. He's going to be out towards the end of the year. But um, for now, for the next multiple weeks or so, he's going to be out. He's placed on IR. And they're going to go, the Falcons are going to roll with Tevin Coleman and Ito Smith as their running backs. uh, Quincy Inunua, his ankle, he's out for three to four weeks. Tavon Austin, Dallas Cowboys wide receiver, groin injury. He's out for week seven. Derek Carr. So he had an injury in uh, week seven, or I'm sorry, he had an injury in week six against the Seattle Seahawks. We hurt his arm and it didn't look too serious. 
We've got some confirmation right now that Derek Carr is going to be playing in week eight. Week seven, they have a bye, so that'll give him some time to rest up, and he's expected to, uh, to suit up in week eight. Ryan Tannehill, Dolphins quarterback, shoulder injury. It's already confirmed that he's going to be out for week seven, and they're going to start Brock Osweiler. Baker Mayfield, same thing as Derek Carr. It didn't seem like too serious of an injury for Mayfield. He hurt his ankle, but he's expected to play in week seven. Calvin Ridley had an ankle injury, so he's day-to-day as well. It's not certain if he's going to play in week seven or not, but for now, um, he's day-to-day. It's beneficial for the Falcons that they have a Monday night game against the New York Giants, so that gives them an extra day. Um, So it's expected that he'll play, but anything could happen, and he's day-to-day for now. Khalil Mack. Also an ankle injury. Boy, this is just a list of ankles. Um, he, he's expected to play in week seven. And Amari Cooper, uh, like we mentioned in the storyline, he could be traded. Um, concussion, suffered it against the Seahawks, was out for the rest of the game. He's day-to-day as well. He's in a concussion protocol, so we'll see if he gets cleared or not and if he'll play in um, week eight. So it's beneficial that he has a bye in week seven. He's day to day. Let's see if he plays in week eight. So that was your storylines. Those are your injury updates. So now we're going to get into weekly picks. Um, talk about each game in week seven. So this is actually not determined by us. Okay. I didn't sit down. I didn't say, I think this team is going to win. It isn't by us. If you follow us on Instagram, you know that every Tuesday we do polls for each game. We let you guys decide who's going to win each game. Who do you guys think is going to win each game? And over 600 of you guys voted in these polls. These are your results. We're going to read them out. And before we read them out, though, if you don't follow us on Instagram, go ahead, pull out your phones, follow us on Instagram, Time to Football. Search for us, follow us on there, because what's really cool is that if you're subscribed to this YouTube channel, and if you go to Instagram and you vote in those weekly games, you can actually have a chance to win your favorite player's jersey. It's actually pretty cool. So we um, have 16 games, 14 games this week, but we give you a chance to vote in these polls. And if you guess every game correctly, and you're subscribed to us on YouTube, you will win a jersey. We'll choose one person that gets all the games uh, correct, and we will choose them to win uh, win a jersey. So... But you got to be subscribed to this YouTube channel. And um, no one so far, this whole entire season, no one has um, guessed every game correctly. So we're still waiting for one person to gain every, every, or guess every game correctly. We've had one person close. He gained, he guessed 14 out of 16 correct. But a lot of upsets happen in the NFL every week. So Instagram.com slash time to football. Follow us on there. Vote in the weekly polls every Tuesday. And if you get the, uh, if you call every game correctly, you can win a jersey. So weekly picks in the NFL. Let's get into it right now. Starting off with uh, the first game, the Thursday night game, the Broncos versus Cardinals. Seventy-one percent of you picked the Broncos to win. Twenty-nine percent are only favoring the Cardinals at home. Titans versus Chargers. Forty-four percent favor the Titans. Fifty-six percent favor the Chargers. Texans versus Jaguars. Thirty-seven percent favor the Texans, 63% favor the Jaguars. Panthers versus Eagles. So 35% of you guys are favoring the Panthers, 65% are favoring the Eagles. 84% are favoring the Vikings to beat the New York Jets, who are only being favored by 16% of you. 75% are favoring the Patriots to beat the Bears, who are favored by 25% of you. Bills versus Colts, 46% are going with the Bills, 54% 54% are going with the Colts. Browns versus Bucks. The Browns on the road. 68% of you are liking them to beat the Bucks at home, which 32% of you are favoring the Bucks. Lions versus Dolphins. 42% are favoring the Lions, and 58% are favoring the Dolphins. Saints versus Ravens. 66% are favoring the Saints, 34% the Ravens. Cowboys versus Redskins, 63% are going with the Cowboys, 37% the Redskins. Rams versus 49ers, this isn't close. 83% are going with the Rams, 49ers at home, 70% like them at home. 
Sunday Night Football, the Bengals versus Chiefs. 24% are going with the Bengals. 76% are going with the Chiefs. And Monday Night Football, the Giants versus Falcons. 40% of you guys like the Giants and 60% of you guys like the 2-4 and four Falcons at home at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So those are your weekly picks for this week, determined by you guys, the fans. Like I said, over 600 of you guys voted. Thank you for voting. And let's see if any of those come into fruition and they come true. We're going to get into some debates in the NFL coming up. But before we get into that, I wanted to take a moment to talk about something amazing that we do here on Time to Football. And that is Patreon. So Patreon is the number one way to support your favorite content creator. I'm telling you guys, this is this is high-end stuff. This is state-of-the-art technology right here. Think of a GoFundMe, but it's every single week. You get to pledge... X amount of dollars to support your favorite content creator, whether it's a videographer, Instagram model that has no talent, a YouTuber, a podcaster, whatever it may be. Patreon.com gives you the opportunity to support them. And depending on how much you support them, goes into what kind of projects you see from them in the future. So for us at Time to Football, we actually have a Patreon page and we have people that actually pledge to us. And have supported the, the the movement in time of football. So if you go to patreon.com slash time of football, you can read up on if you pledge X amount of dollars, you can get X amount of rewards. So the best deal is if you pledge one dollar a month. That's it. One dollar only takes two minutes, and you get fantasy football advice, personal fantasy football advice. It's a limited time offer. It's a seven dollar um offer that we're offering for one dollar you can get fantasy football advice you can get um personalized advice on um us researching your league we look at everybody's team's rosters in your league so we research that stuff we research everybody's roster which players you should trade for we look at your waiver wire which players you should pick up off the waiver wire, your strengths, your weaknesses of your team, who you should start and sit every single week, all for just $1 a month. You get a second opinion from us. So it's a great deal. I would do it. Go ahead and act on that offer before it changes and it goes back up to $7, which it will next month. So patreon.com slash time to football. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash time the number two football patreon.com slash time to football oh yeah oh yeah oh no oh no we're gonna talk about some debates and i don't know why i'm saying oh no because it's actually some pretty hot topics that we're talking about and one of the uh topics that we want to talk about this is actually a pretty cool interesting look at things that we kind of read up on just today on NFL.com. So Maurice Jones-Drew, he used to be a running back in the NFL for you uh, new fans that don't know about him. Played for the Jaguars. Pretty good running back. He was a rushing champion at one point and a pretty good, solid fantasy football star. Um, He actually wrote an article. He's an analyst now um, for NFL Network. He wrote an article comparing a team's running back success to a quarterback success on the same team. Primarily a running back duo success. So, for instance, we've been mentioning the Chargers a lot. Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler. Two great running backs. And look at the quarterback. Solid quarterback in Philip Rivers. Probably having the best season of his career so far. So, what Maurice Jones drew, what MJD did, was he correlated a running back duo success to a quarterback success, probably in the standard of MVP success for the quarterback. We mentioned Philip Rivers, arguably an MVP candidate. He's not going to win MVP this year because there's other candidates that 
are much better or having better seasons this year, but he's in the conversation. And that's, and look at the Los Angeles Chargers. They have two great running backs in Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler. Let's look at another team, for instance, the New England Patriots. Sony Michelle, who's been on the rise, and James White, who's always been solid. Two great running backs, uh, a great running back duo in New England. Oh, look at their quarterback as well. Probably the greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady, having a great season as well. Let's look at another team. Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram. Who's their quarterback? Drew Brees, having an MVP-style year this year. So there's a lot of correlation between that. And I'm going to say, probably not to the MVP standard, but Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton is having a solid year. That Bengals offense is on fire. And look at the running backs. You've got Joe Mixon. Giovanni Bernard, Bernard is hurt, but you've also got Mark Walton, who's been making some plays. So great running backs. And that correlates to their quarterback and doing well. Um, what does that say, though? That that. that That says that there's a trend going on that a lot of teams could be following. And, of course, there's those outliers like Todd Gurley and Jared Goff. Jared Goff is a solid quarterback, even though Todd Gurley is a three-down back. Barely any uh, playing time goes to Malcolm Brown, the running back, uh, the backup running back for the Rams. There's some outliers for that. Um, But is that what the trend of the NFL is now what offenses are trying to go after because this is a copycat league even look at the Philadelphia Eagles I'm going to go that far Um, Jay Jay Ajayi unfortunately he's injured this year but um, look at last year when he came in he had bursts of of, of good games and uh, Corey Clement Ligurit Blunt was back there he did well Um, so having multiple running backs and, and Carson Wentz obviously did well as well Having multiple running backs and their quarterback success, it, it could be a correlation like Maurice Jones-Drew talked about. Uh, but what does that say about the future? And what other running backs are there in the NFL that could be on the rise and they could have a solid running back duo and the quarterback could have some success as well? I'm going to look at Cleveland and I'm going to say uh, Carlos Hyde, Nick Chubb, throw in Duke Johnson. Why not? I know it's a duo, but... If you want to talk about a duo, Carlos Hyde and Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb hasn't been getting a lot of playing time, but when he has been playing, he's been pretty decent. And if they develop a solid running back duo, how's that going to help out Baker Mayfield in the coming years? Um, Sam Darnold, Isaiah Crowell, Bilal Powell, another running back duo that's not at the level of maybe like Sony Michelle or James White or Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler. But if they develop, what does that say about Sam Darnold's development? in the coming years. It, interesting article. Uh, go check it out on NFL.com, written by Maurice Jones-Drew. Uh, great read. I would check it out. Another debate that uh, we want to talk about it involves the Los Angeles Rams. So the 6-0 Rams, they are undefeated. They, The more well-rounded team in the NFL. They Offense, defense, and the moves that they made in free agency, it reflects that. They are the best team in the NFL right now, record-wise and talent-wise. And is there any team that can beat the Los Angeles Rams? That's actually what we wanted to talk about right now. Let's first break down the NFC. What teams are a threat to Jared Goff and the Los Angeles Rams in the NFC? Before the season, you would have said the Minnesota Vikings. Maybe right now they still are, but they're not performing as well as expected. Offensively, yes, despite not having that good of a run game. Defensively, they're bottom 10 in pass defense. It's tough to say because in that game, that Thursday night thriller, when the Rams and the Vikings faced, it was back and forth. The Rams weren't giving in. The Rams defense didn't look too good in that game. The Vikings offense gave it all that they had, but the the offense responded and they looked well in that game. So they're going to be keeping up with them and I don't think there's any signs of them slowing down and it's tough to say if the Vikings are going to beat them. What other teams? The defending Super Bowl champions, Philadelphia Eagles. Let's take them. Can they beat the Los Angeles Rams? (sighs) Man, it's, I don't know. They just aren't looking as good as they were last year. 
Last week's uh, Thursday night football game against the New York Giants, they were looking solid. Carson Wentz was back to his usual self. But as of right now, the Los Angeles Rams are a better team than the Philadelphia Eagles. So, eliminates the Vikings, eliminates the Eagles. I'll even go as far as probably the Saints might have the best shot at beating them. Just because maybe their defense isn't as good, but like the Los Angeles Rams and the Minnesota Vikings game where the Rams were keeping up with the Vikings and they wouldn't give in on offense. I don't think the Saints would give in on offense either. And they would give it everything that they caught they got. So best shot at beating the Rams. Personally, I feel like it is the Saints over the Vikings, the Eagles. Heck, we already know the Falcons. I would say over the Panthers. I would say over all the other NFC teams, even the Packers. I would say the Saints have the best shot at beating the Rams, but it, it seems like the Rams are dead set on making a Super Bowl run, um, and they'll more than likely be playing in Super Bowl 53 in um, Atlanta and Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Um, as far as any AFC team, who will they be playing in the Super Bowl if they make it to the Super Bowl? You've got the Patriots, the Chiefs, the Bengals even, the Steelers, um, some solid teams in the AFC, which is seeming a lot more competitive this year. Um, the Chiefs have a good shot at beating them. Um, so do the Patriots, even though the record doesn't really reflect that. They have some good. They have a good chance at well. Never count out Tom Brady. Um, so in the AFC, there seems like there's a lot more competition in beating the Rams. So if the Rams beat all the teams in the NFC, they get to the Super Bowl. They'll probably have a tough time in the Super Bowl. It'll be a competitive game regardless of who they face. Uh, but in the NFC, it seems more like a cakewalk. Um, I don't want to say cakewalk. It's going to be competitive, but they're the clear-cut favorites to win the NFC, maybe besides the Saints. Um, but another AFC team that could make it to the Super Bowl that I personally feel like has a shot at beating the Rams if they make the Super Bowl, it goes into our next debate that we're going to talk about. Who is the most underrated team in the NFL right now. It's an AFC team. I'll give you a couple guesses. Go on. Guess. No, it's not that team. It's not that team either. I'm just kidding. I can't read your mind. I don't know what you're saying. I'm probably saying it. But um, it's actually the Chargers. Um, I picked the Chargers to make it to the Super Bowl before the season started. That was my personal pick for the AFC. Um, for the NFC, <laughs> oh gosh, I picked the Falcons. I'm a Falcons fan. What can I say? I want to see them win a Super Bowl in their home stadium. Um, but uh, more than likely this year, uh, they won't. But enough of that. Uh, talk about the Chargers. Uh, so I had them and the Bengals as two of the most underrated teams in the NFL right now, not getting the recognition that they deserve. Bengals, they are 4 and 2. The Chargers, they are 4 and 2. The reason I say the Chargers over the Bengals is because they're the most well-rounded. They are 5th in the NFL in points per game with 29.2 points a game, which is better than the Bengals. They're 7th in yards a game um, as far as passing and rushing goes on offense total. And they're 13th in defense. So the Bengals are bottom five in defense as far as their pass defense goes. The Chargers, they've been holding their own. They are 13th in the NFL, which isn't too bad. It's better than half the teams in the NFL. So um, defensively, they can get it done if they need to. Offensively, we know that they're a high-powered offense and they can get it done. So is this a team that is underrated? Is this a team that can beat the Los Angeles Rams? Um, in the Super Bowl if they make it to the Super Bowl. I believe that if the Chargers make it to the Super Bowl and if they win, then Phillip Rivers is going to retire. I've been saying it on this podcast for the longest time. If they lose, mm, maybe he'll come back. I think if he makes the Super Bowl, it'll be like, okay, I've done it all. I've at least made the Super Bowl, win or lose. I think I can hang it up. Guaranteed, I think he's going to hang it up if he wins the Super Bowl. But um, the reason I say that is just he's a family man. He 
He's done it all. Like I said, he's been in the NFL for a very long time. He has nothing else to prove. If he wins the Super Bowl, that already cements his legacy. And at that point, debatedly, he'll be a Hall of Fame quarterback. So um, I feel like Philip Rivers would retire if he wins the Super Bowl after this season. So most underrated team, the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, Now it's time for the last segment of the day, and that is fan questions. So... um, we asked you guys to submit your questions through Instagram, and we're just going to read off a few of these. And now these are all, I haven't pre-read any of these questions. I haven't, I don't write down my answers and say I'm on air. This is all authentic. So my reaction to all of this is going to be real, and you guys get to see it firsthand. So a lot of guys are trolls on the internet, and a lot of guys like to be dirty as well. So... Uh, I may or may not read those questions. I'll just say that. So let's go ahead and skim through these questions. Um, this is a good one. This is from Mikey Thon underscore 83. He asks, why is Drew Brees still getting disrespected by everyone when he's truly the GOAT? Who dat? Appreciate your question, Mikey. Um, as far as the title of GOATS, that's all opinion-based. So I'm not going to get into whether he is or not. As far as him being disrespected, that I, I do see where you're coming from. I don't feel like he's disrespected as far as players hate him or that they think he's a bad quarterback. But he's disrespected in the sense that he doesn't get enough coverage. Um in the NFL as maybe like Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers does. Um, He's a guy that's always in the MVP conversations or should be every single year. Um, And he's never won an MVP. Um, He should have back in 2009, but they gave it to Peyton Manning. Um, So I see where you're coming from with the disrespect aspect of it, but it's not because people hate him. It's because he just doesn't get talked about a lot or he's very underrated. The New Orleans Saints aren't like a nationally covered team by the media maybe like the the Patriots or the Cowboys are or, um, but I, I understand what you're saying so he's probably gosh I've been saying this for the past 5-10 years probably the most accurate quarterback in the NFL um, so he, he definitely deserves to be talked about a lot more um, but yeah Saints really good with that uh, with him under under center so Mikey, appreciate you asking that question. Um, next question. Do you think Le'Veon Bell will change the Steelers? How so? Um, that's from the username Hamo, Hamo Boy. Gosh, you guys. Got some interesting names. H-A-M-O-B-0-Y. Maybe the O was taken. That username was already taken, so he had to put a zero in there. Uh, But appreciate your question. Do I think that Le'Veon Bell will change the Steelers? For the good, uh, yeah, but I don't think it's going to be by much. Just because James Conner, he's a good running back, and he's been proven that he can be the franchise running back in Pittsburgh. Is he as consistent as Le'Veon Bell? No. Um, He's had some games where he hasn't been that good, but um, I think the Steelers are fine without him. And I think... Le'Veon Bell coming back with just being the icing on top. I don't think he's going to change him by much. I think this offense is good with or without him. And uh, as far as like change negative wise, the only negative change I think that he would make on the team is if he, um, you know, his character, his uh, ability to make the media very attentive on what he wants to say. But that's it for really the debates in the NFL. Actually, that's it for the uh, the uh, podcast. You guys have joined us for the very first Week 7 2018 podcast in time to football history. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing because it's the only one in history that we'll ever do. Week 7 2018. Only one Week 7 2018 can happen in NFL history. An amazing fact for you guys. Um, But we appreciate you guys joining us. Appreciate you guys. When I say it like that. Appreciate you guys joining us for this week's podcast. Listen, if you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, on the podcast app, great for you. 
We recommend you guys because you can listen to it on the go instead of having to sit down here for 40 minutes and look at me talk about nothing. You can listen to me talk about nothing, pause and stop and pick up from where you left off. Like, it, it, it's great. But we recommend you guys, highly recommend you guys to go follow us on Instagram and on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube because we come out with a lot more videos on YouTube that we don't come out with on on uh, iTunes or the podcast app. So we come out with fancy football advice. Listen, if your team sucks, like my team, I'm three and three. I need a lot of help. I need to give advice to myself. Uh, maybe I'm not the best person, but listen, go to youtube.com slash time to football. Watch our fantasy football advice videos. A lot of people love it. It's really been taken off. A lot of people ask uh, fantasy football advice in the comments. We reply to almost all of them. We have a good success rate in guessing like which players are going to do well. Also, you know, sometimes you have some players that it's fantasy football. Anything could happen on any given Sunday. We have some players that do terrible, but we're pretty much we have a good success rate. So go to youtube.com slash time to football. Subscribe to us on there. Um, also, regardless if you're watching this on YouTube or on the podcast app, go to Instagram. Really follow us on there because we do a lot of interactive um, things with you guys as far as those weekly polls where you just have to follow us, subscribe to us on YouTube, and if you guess every game correctly for the week, you win a freaking jersey, a $99 value. We'll give it to you, man. I'll pull out my wallet right now, but I can't right now because I don't have it in my back pocket. You want to know why? Because I'm wearing underwear. I'm not wearing any pants. I never wear any pants in time to football videos, but I will pull out my wallet. I will buy you any jersey that you want and I will send it to you if you are subscribed to this YouTube channel. Go to Instagram.com slash time to football. Guess every game correctly every Tuesday and we will choose one of you guys that guesses those games correctly give you a free jersey. So we appreciate you guys joining us. Make sure you hit us up at Patreon.com slash time to football. You know, support the brand. Help us out. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, la, 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 la. get you later. Love you. Is that awkward to say? I don't know. Boom!